Welcome to day three of our exploration of Handel's Messiah for Advent. The paths of the Messiah don't run smooth. He brings comfort, but the bringing is not comfortable. Charles Jennings knew that. He's the one who linked these Bible verses together for Handel. He was a gentleman with a large country estate in Leicestershire, a political outsider. Because of his refusal to take the oath of loyalty to the ruling house of Hanover, he poured his energy instead into the arts. In fact, he provided Handel with uh, text for several oratorios before Messiah. He was also involved in theological controversy over questions of the highest significance. Is Jesus God's Messiah? The influential movement called Deism denied it. Jennings insisted on it. We'll talk more about that controversy another day and on how Handel's Messiah relates to it. But as we prepare to listen to the next scene, just be aware that Jennings knew, he knew firsthand the turbulence Jesus could bring. We're about to meet a couple of Old Testament prophets, the prophets Haggai and Malachi. Both men preached to the people of Jerusalem after the return from exile in Babylon. Oh, those returnees picked their way through the rubble of their lost past, disillusioned as it seemed to slip further and further from their grasp. So through Haggai and Malachi, the Lord expands their vision forwards to the coming of the one Haggai calls the desired of all nations and whom Malachi calls the Lord whom you seek, the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. So the people are getting cynical, they're getting slack as they rebuild the temple, which was only a shadow of the one the Babylonians had destroyed. But Messiah is coming to this temple, urges Malachi. Get ready for him and expect some turbulence. His coming will shake the world, says Haggai. And spiritually, at first, as our human values are turned upside down, that's exactly what happened. And then finally, Jesus comes to shake the whole creation in judgment before recreating it. Who can abide the coming of Messiah? Who can stand when he appears? He will shake the whole of reality and he will be like a refiner's fire. He will consume those who refuse him and purify all who do, making them his priests to offer sacrifices in worship. You may remember that Jesus drove the religious racketeers from the temple in his day. It was him demonstrating this purifying mission. There's a musical change this morning from the bright, sharp major keys of the opening comfort we heard yesterday. We're in flat minor keys now. Listen for the shaking on the word shake. Listen for the violin flames on the refiner's fire. And consider this sobering truth. The paths of Messiah don't run smooth, either for him or his followers, because in it, this is a world that prefers darkness to light, moral compromise to purity. In the ultimate analysis, of course, nobody has what it takes to stand when he appears. But be of good comfort. He came to make us stand. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for a due sense of Jesus' momentous significance. Hold us firm by your spirit that no matter what ex turbulence we experience in following him, we will never fall. Forgive us and purify us so that the offering of our lives may be holy and pleasing to you. In Messiah's name. Amen.